Oh yeah, here it is. Fade to Black, baby, a film from 1980. Look how beautiful this artwork is on this Vinegar Syndrome slipcover. Turn around, so more awesome artwork. And yes, a lot of you people watching may have seen this film. If not, and you're a movie lover, I would watch this one ASAP. Get it from Vinegar Syndrome. You cannot go wrong. The quality of this film looks amazing. It's from Vernon Zimmerman, who um, has directed and wrote screenplays for two other films that I really enjoy, Teen Witch and Unholy Rollers, starring the great Dennis Christopher, who's also in another film I love, Breaking Away. Yeah, watch Breaking Away and Fade to Black back to back. Yes. And Dennis Christopher plays roles where he's infatuated with certain something. This movie being movies, and the other movie, Bicycling. Yes. Fade to Black, baby. Amazing, amazing film. Here we go. Welcome to Body Bags. I'm your Thursday reviewer, Chris, from Chris B Movies. You know my name is Chris, and you know I love B Movies. Yes, a lot of us are infatuated with movies. I have been infatuated with movies ever since I was five years old. Um, seeing my first film at five, five in theaters, I think it was Rumpelstiltskin. And looking at the Sunday paper and circling the big ads from movies that are coming to your local theaters. I would get so excited. The excitement of it and stuff coming soon. And uh, I, I was infatuated with movies. I mean, I've seen, I used to go to movies every single week, maybe twice or three times a week. My parents would take me. Uh, my mother would take me. My dad would take me. My stepfather would take me. Um, I'd go with my cousins to movies. I just couldn't get enough of going to the movies. And even today, at a later age, I'm still infatuated with movies. I just love movies, all types of movies. This one being a fun little horror film, and I, I understand this guy's infatuation. You know, you're surrounded about people who just don't understand your infatuation. They may be infatuated with other things. They may be, you know, they may like some movies here and there, but not as big of a, a, a movie fan as you are, you know? And uh, so it's, uh, I can understand where this guy's coming from. So he, yeah, he's a big movie lover. Um, Dennis Christopher's character here, Eric Binford. He uh, he loves the classic films. He loves Cagney. He likes Lugosi. He loves Karloff. He loves Marilyn Monroe. He quotes his favorite movie characters um, throughout the film, and he's just it's just something he loves. He lives with his mother, and we come to find out that it's not his aunt. It is actually his mother. So spoiler alert there. Who um is very disproving of his lifestyle. You know, he smokes, he drinks soda pop, he eats bad foods, and uh, she tries to get him to change his lifestyle. Stop smoking, um, stop drinking soda pop, eat more vegetables, and she's always on him and on him and, and antagonizing him and can't understand his love for movies. Um, he has a projector in his room where he's you know constantly watching films. He has a small little TV, a uh, cute little thing from the 80s. Um, those little mini TVs and, and he's watching movies there as well and he's always reading up on movies and he also works for a big movie distribution company um, a Los Angeles distributor warehouse basically where he's a, just a screw up at his job and his boss not only has heart problems but is miserable and has wicked anger management issues and is always berating him and he has a co-worker one of the co-workers played by Mickey Rock who constantly just picks on him and uh, makes fun of him and he meets a girl at a diner that he really thinks is Marilyn Monroe, but it's actually Marilyn O'Connor. And um, she is actually nice to him, but she stands him up on a date. Well, she shows up a little too late for his liking. So now this people's he, he just gets picked on wherever he goes, but at home, at work, trying to meet a girl. And so now he's pissed off and... The cream of the crop is when his <clears throat> mother comes in and takes his projector while he's watching a movie during his favorite part and just throws it to the side. Says, stop watching those movies. That's where he just starts going completely mad and is now going to exact revenge on the people who have berated him, who have picked on him, who have stood him up on dates. And he takes on the characters of the movies he watches. <laughs> so at one point, he attacks his boss dressed up as the mummy. He goes after this uh, prostitute girl who is very rude to him as Dracula. Um, he goes after uh, <laughs> Mickey Rourke's character, 
<laughs> as Hopalong Cassidy, and that scene is absolutely freaking hysterical. So he basically kills people like the deaths he's seen in movies, um, which I think is a really good take. And even for 1980, it was a w way ahead of its time. Uh, some people survive, some people don't, and of course, there's a cops. Oh yeah, cops. And a professor who is chasing him down, trying to get to him, after they find out that he's the one doing all these killings. And it's kind of funny because he he does kill some people, but some people just kind of fall, like one girl gets fall and gets impaled in a fence, and so he doesn't really kill her, he just chased her down. <laughs> But some people he does kill in this film. This film is a blast. And if you love movies, you know what a lot of the movies that he loves. You know, I mean, who doesn't love James Cagney? Who doesn't love Bela Lugosi? You know, who doesn't love Marilyn Monroe? If you're a big film fan, you love all those superstars. <clears throat> and, of course, if you're infatuated with film like I am, and I'm sure you all are, um, all types of films, you can really appreciate where he's coming from and how at times we, we seem like an outcast in this world where, you know, you try to talk about movies with people and they just have seen nothing other than, you know, Star Wars films and Russell Crowe films and Brad Pitt films. It's like, oh, okay, okay, well, I've seen those films, but how about this film? And they, they don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> so it's, so it's kind of it's cool when you can actually meet someone and, and have conversations with about movies, kind of like the Body Bags guys. That's why I love these guys so much. Um, but yeah, Fade to Black is an amazing film. Um, this is the best it's ever looked. Um, gotta love this artwork, man. And I'm gonna open this up and just kind of show you the disc a little bit. Because I can't say enough good things about Vinegar Syndrome. It is my favorite distribution company, my favorite, uh, people to buy from. Favorite company to buy from, let's just say. Um, not only because of the slip covers, but, you know, the way the print looks. And that's the original artwork over there. I can't say enough how, how great this film is. The best I've ever seen it look. So kudos to Vinegar Syndrome for putting this out. Um, it is one of my favorite films in the 80s. I've watched this one several times and it was good um, just watching a little while ago after I have not seen it in a few years. But what, what, honestly, if you've never seen this film, like go to Vinegar Syndrome and pick this one up right now. You cannot go wrong, especially if you love film. Um, you will definitely appreciate this film. And Dennis Christopher is freaking awesome in this film. I, I gotta say, he's a great actor. Um, you know, you can also see him in Breaking Away, which I highly recommend Breaking Away. It is a film that tries to take itself seriously. There's just so many laugh-out-loud moments in that film. It is a hysterical film. Um, and I have to say, Linda Carriage, who played Marilyn O'Connor, um, she was an Australian actress, and um, she really looked like Marilyn Monroe in this one. I think she did a really good job as well. Mickey Rourke was awesome. Tim Thomerson as one of the detectives. Uh, it was just amazing. Tim Thomerson is always good in everything. And Norman Burton, who played uh, who played his boss in the film, <laughs> he played the just good old miserable man who had heart problems. <laughs> he had a lot of more of the comic relief in the film. But it was great when um, when um, uh, Eric dressed up as a mummy and was going after him. <laughs> Absolutely hysterical. Great film, um, stellar release from Vinegar Syndrome. I can't say enough good things about it. Check it out now. And I would highly recommend you to check it out now. So I'm going to go with 10 being the best, 1 being the worst. I give this a full 10. I think it's a perfect film. <laughs> I love it so much. Other people may not give it a 10, and I totally get that. Movies are subjective. You like what you like, but give this one a try. It's um, an absolutely fun film, you know. And uh, again, a guy who loves films, who reenacts death scenes in the movies he watches in real life, basically. <laughs> and he gets back to the people who are mean to him. Gets those bullies. So yeah, can't highly recommend this one enough. Check it out. And check out all the other Body Bags reviewers. They are all wonderful and bring great stuff to the table. And um, yeah, check out them as well. See you next Thursday. Because yeah, you never know what I'm going to bring to the table. Something really cool because it will be theme week next week. So check it out. And don't forget to watch those late night horror movies. Read up on your latest Fright Mags. Don't forget to tune in to another episode of a show we call Body Bags. Oh yeah. Well, I will reenact a death scene from one of my movies and come after you. <laughs> so until next week, fade to black.